front of the car, Bobby. Well, Emil might not, might not know. Remember when a driver's going into the turns, he's going in there 180, 185 miles an hour. He doesn't really know what happened. He just knows that something broke or something gave way. Often, sometimes you run over something, a tire explodes because you puncture it real fast. It's like a blown out deal. But I think in this case, it looks to me like there's something probably in the rear end that gave away. Let's watch it again right here. Second time today, by the way, Scott Pruitt has come very close to getting involved in something. He was the next car down ahead of Al Unser Jr. And the whole rest of the field was still pretty well closed up. There's Emerson Fittipaldi. Thank goodness he appears to be okay, but not happy. He's had victory in his hands and thought that he had this race won after watching his teammate lead by full two laps most of the way. Yeah, totally unavoidable on Emerson's part. He just, he just rolled it out when it happened. So 173 miles are complete in this race that went so smooth for so long and just in a very short span of time has taken away two leaders. We'll be back. 73 races since his last win. He circles now behind the PPG pace car with 24 miles to go to the finish of this race. As soon as they come back green, he will have a full lap on the field. One of his owners, Paul Newman. What a weekend they have had, both Newman and Carl Haas. The problems yesterday with Nigel Mansell. Then watching the Penske cars dominate and both Penske cars crash. And Mario, after a spectacular qualification run that put him on the outside of the front row, in trouble. Mario now out in front. Saturday on ABC Sports, the Professional Bowlers Tour rolls in with the BPAA U.S. Open. Then on ABC's Wide World of Sports, world-class athletes meet in Cancun for the second challenge of the Jeep Superstars. And from Austria, celebrate the International Special Olympics presented by Dollar Rent-A-Car all Saturday on ABC Sports. Bobby, at the outset, you mentioned the new order of things in IndyCar racing and, and mentioned Gordon and a couple of the other young guys. There's Carl Haas, the owner of Mario's car. Who would have thought that at this point in the race that the oldest driver in the race would be leading it? Mario at 53. Well, you know, Sam, also I think we've seen one of the most exciting races here at Phoenix. Totally unpredictable than we've ever seen before. Allinger Jr. in, tops up for fuel. You know, one guy who was really solid here, Allinger Jr., by the way, was running in fourth, was really solid here in, in his heyday, lives here now out in Paradise Valley. It's Tom Sneva. He has a, a golf course that he's part of. He calls it the, uh, the Tom Sneva 500 Club. And on that course, he's got this. You talk about a golf cart. We're talking, look at that 500 winter ring there on Sneva's hand. You're talking major major golf cart here about what 120 miles an hour look at this from tom a real hot ride well it's too bad he didn't enter it in the race he might be doing pretty well he by could, now he could be running about fifth place right now <laughs> looks like he's having a great time in the desert just outside of phoenix arizona we'll be back for the conclusion of the valvoline 200 and let me tell you it is not over yet eighty miles, the uh, distance traveled, 20 to go, we're still under yellow, Mario Andretti, the leader of the race, not at a record pace any longer, the yellows of the last few laps, taking out both leaders, Paul Tracy and Emerson Fittipaldi, have had a dire effect upon the average speed of the race, the record will still belong to Roberto Guerrero, but will Mario Andretti finally break that streak? It's been a long time since he has won an IndyCar, you can trace it all the way back, to July 3rd of 1988 at Cleveland. Mario said that he's been missing the presence of his son, Michael, terribly on the team, but I think this will breathe all sorts of new life into him. Jimmy Vassar, he runs in third place. His best career effort thus far was seventh last year at Long Beach. Here's how he ran throughout the day. Nice steady run for Jimmy Vassar. So it's Mario Andretti, a lap ahead of Raul Boisel, who is two laps ahead of Jimmy Vassar. Just think of how often in the years at Indianapolis and other races, Mario Andretti has been what you call snake bit. Only 20 laps to go, a lap cushion here right now. It would seem to be wrapped up for Mario Andretti, but the, because of his particular string of bad luck, you really wonder if it is. 
I'll tell you what, if he doesn't win this race, he's going to remember what you just said, Sam. There's no question <laughs> in my mind about well, it. Well, and he's very superstitious, too. Exactly. Uh, That's why he's going to remember. <laughs> he probably has more experience than all the guys behind him totaled up. Just think about that. Well, Bobby, it's his 40th run here at Phoenix, and the guy with the next most experience, now that you mentioned that, was Ray Hall with just 14 starts. So the green flag now flies again in the Valvoline 200. Mario Andretti, a full lap on the field. But we have seen that top slot change twice in the recent laps. Small little mistakes, but we're talking one of the great veterans here. As he carefully moves down the back stretch, picking up the pace, no hesitation whatsoever. Raul Boisel is in second. In third place is Vassar. Allinger Jr. is fourth, followed by Teo Fabi, Ari Leyendijk, Scott Pruitt. Kudrave and then Mark Smith. Fittipaldi was the contact with the wall while he was in the lead, and he's falling down through the order now as the rest of the leaders continue to pass him. It's pretty good when you're in Mario's position and you look in your mirrors and you see two men who have not won an IndyCar race. Fittipaldi out of the race, as we mentioned. Here's Jack Root. Emil, first of all, you've been released. Your own okay, but what happened out there? Well, when Paul Tracy crashed, I got a uh, debris from his car and they heated the rear wishbone on my rear suspension and uh, I asked Roger to have a look on the pace laps and he have a look it looks like I lost a fourth cylinder but something went under the rear suspension and damage and going to I was very easy going to turn three just snapped the rear wheel and I lost control unfortunately it was a great race so we were doing a great race well it's a tough break for for Emerson Fittipaldi but also coming out after a problem is Paul Tracy Paul, first of all, your condition, you had a little bit of a problem with a knee. Yeah, I uh, banged up my knee. Uh, you know, everything's all right. You know, we're having a good race, and, and you know, we're running really good in traffic. And then... Uh, and what happened there? It uh, just seemed like some of the guys didn't want to, you know, need to the, up the blue flag. And, you know, it's disappointing to be up a couple laps, being in the lead. And, you know, we'll, we'll come back at Long Beach. Just want to say hi to uh, my wife, Tara, and I'm all right. Amazing. In less than five minutes, both one and two out of the race, Paul. Yeah, but a newlywed, he's figured out exactly how to handle it as he said, he says hi to his new bride. Now we keep an eye on the field with Ross Bentley and Marco Greco as they battle for position. You know, I think a lot of fans across the country have been excited by a lot of the new drivers coming into this. But this moment right here with Mario at front is going to bring a resurgence of feeling for some of the older drivers. And I think a lot of people people probably pulling for him right now. You see him pulling up behind two much younger drivers, looking for a spot as he goes into turn one. And they're involved in a battle right there as Mario has to be very careful coming up behind Matsushita, who runs in 10th place like right now. And he was careful very careful he knows that victory is within his reach just 10 miles away if he can only hold on that's a neat thing about mario at this particular time he laps his slower cars but he's got so much experience he's won so many races he knows the easiest way to lose a race is right at the last by doing something stupid so if something happens with him i'll bet you it's going to be the car not mario he won here in 1966 again in 67 and then in 1988 20 years after that. Now he's poised to win five years later than that. Incredible record. Allinger Jr. in fourth place, closing in now on third place, Jimmy Vassar. We've been watching little Al, Paul, as he comes in the pits lots of times, about three times in a row. They've been working on the rear wing of the car. Now this Lola's new to them. Some of the other Lola's in the race have got some new under trays, some new under panels to the cars, the downforce equipment. They don't have it on the Rick Gallus car. So they've been working on the rear wing, trying to get his hand in. And Bobby, in, in two weeks, of course, we'll see little Al in action at Long Beach, where he has been so dominant in the last few years. So coming off of this race strong is going to be a huge uh, bit of confidence building for him. Well, their car testing that they're doing right now, Sam, has a lot to do with what they're going to be able to do at Long Beach. Allinger Jr. very carefully moves through path traffic. He is in fourth place. Teo Fabi is behind him in fifth. Ari Leyendijk is sixth. Scott Pruitt, seventh. Kudrave runs in eighth. Mark Smith is ninth. Matsushita, tenth. Ross Bentley, eleventh. Marco Greco, twelfth. And Lynn St. James runs in thirteenth. There are 13 cars running at the moment. Ari Leyendijk, you now ride on board with Ari in sixth place. A frustrating day, I think, for Ari so far, don't you, Paul? Because here he is with a new team, the Chip Ganassi team. Very promising. A lot of people thought this would be a front-running combination. It hasn't been on a track that he has won on before. I think they were expecting great things. And speaking of expecting, 
his wife Mika is expecting a uh, two kids, twins. Ari Leyendijk, I think within his team, Chip Ganassi's organization, they are still getting accustomed to one another a little bit more. And he's definitely a, a factor to watch in the upcoming season. For Mario Andretti, five miles to victory. It has been such a long time. In his pits, <laughs> you can imagine what they're thinking. What a weekend they've had. And you think of the way this weekend began with all the focus of attention on Nigel Mansell. Nigel this, Nigel that. He well deserved it. He was the fastest man. Mario was in his shadow. And Mario might have been frustrated earlier in this race when he dropped from the front uh, row position, second fastest qualifying, back to sixth, even seventh briefly. But he kept his patience. He's come up. The race came to him. McGee, the team manager that we were looking at there, living another long day trying to win a race. I'll tell you what, he was instrumental in managing Nigel Mansell's victory at Australia. And consider what Carl Haas is thinking about here. The possibility of wins in the first two races of the season. One with each of his two drivers. Carl Haas came down to my motorhome this morning, and the poor guy sat there playing with my Siamese cat, just shaking his head, thinking what a terrible weekend he was having so far. Now look. Mario Andretti, his car leading the race, very good chance of winning it. You wonder if Carl can hold his breath along with Paul Newman for the remaining distance because as Mario comes around this time, Jim Swintel will have the white flag indicating one more lap to go and Mario Andretti will be on his way to victory number 52, second on the all-time list to A.J. Foyt. 31 of his wins have come on ovals, and Mario Andretti has taken that white flag. Paul Newman watches. They hope for Mario Andretti the dry spell may finally be over. Traffic just ahead of him. Ever so careful now as Mario Andretti can see the checkered flag just ahead. Twin checkered flags come out, and Mario Andretti in the Kmart Texaco Hamlin Lola has taken the victory. What a weekend for Newman Haas Racing. An incredible time. And Paul Newman couldn't be happier. It just shows you never quit. You never can tell what's going to happen. There's a very special bond between Paul Newman and Mario Andretti of mutual respect. Neither of them uh, likes to be predictable. Mario's used the phrase so often, you wear the armor. He drives as a gladiator. Today he fought his way through the traffic, the tensest and most difficult race in Phoenix in many, many years, and came out front. And now all he has ahead of him is an empty track as he comes up to the checkered flag area here. So what that will do is put Newman Haas's team with their drivers 1-2 in the points fight. Mansell is second in the points despite missing this race. And Mario is in the lead by 11 points. Mario Andretti rolls to a stop and begins to unbuckle. He is the winner here at Phoenix. We're running out of time, but we're going to do our best to talk with Mario Andretti. Let's go to Jack. Well, Mario Andretti getting out of the car, running out of time, but not for you. Congratulations, Mario. Uh, thank you. It's just so wonderful. I'm so happy. I tell you, credit goes to my crew. They had to change an engine today, and we just hung in there. You know, it just uh, it was not the perfect setup, but we got it better and better, and uh, the guy just did a marvelous job getting in and out of the pit. And the emotion, the emotion of the weekend, what with Nigel Mansell's problems and with you. Describe it for a minute. Well, you know, uh, it's so wonderful to be able to bring it home for the team because, uh, you know, that was uh, a natural setback. But, uh, you know, the man upstairs was looking after us and, uh, God, I'm so happy. <laughs> Paul, it's Andretti again, but this time Mario, and it's been a while. Mario Andretti takes the win, followed by Raul Boisel, Jimmy Vassar, and Al Unser Jr. Here at ABC, we'll see you in two weeks on the streets of Long Beach, California. The Valvoline 200 has been brought to you by Valvoline. People who know, use Valvoline. By Burger King, where you can always get it your way right away. I love this place. By Toyota, reminding you to always buckle up. Do it for those who love you. And by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. Saturday, ABC Sports rolls in with the BPAA U.S. Open. Then, ABC's Wide World of Sports features the next challenge in the Jeep Superstars. Plus, the International Special Olympics and the Bluegrass Stakes. Later, stay tuned for World News Sunday over most of these ABC stations.
This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.